Hello and thanks for joining us. This is a Signature TV News update. I am Marvelous Obomano. Now in the headlines, Gunmen kill four born down Iwolo Police Division in Enugu State. Corruption to rehonors Kanu State Police officers who rejected bribe. P Pfizer and BioNTech to supply 1 billion vaccines to low income nations. And now the details. Gunmen on Tuesday attacked Iwolo, a police station in a Zago local government area of Enugu State, and killed four officers on duty. The officers died of gunshot wounds sustained in a gun duel while trying to repel the attack. According to a statement by the Commissioner of Police, Mohammed Ndatsu, the hoodlums who came to the station in their numbers opened fire on police operatives on duty but were vehemently resisted while several of the assailants escaped with bullet injuries. Ndatsu, who said the operatives were later confirmed dead in the hospital, disclosed that parts of the station were set ablaze by the assailants. The police boss and some senior members of the command visited the police station for an on-the-spot assessment while an investigation has been launched into the attack to fish out the assailants and their sponsors. He also extended his condolence to the families and close friends of the policemen who paid the ultimate price in the line of duty. The Kanu State Commissioner of Police, Shwai Budiko, says officers and men of the command are now more committed to shun all corrupt tendencies in the discharge of their duties. The commissioner was speaking when Corruption Tory, a program produced by Signature Communications and supported by MacArthur Foundation, honored some officers of the command as anti-corruption icons. Correspondent Ifunanya Ilodianya was at the event and now reports. There seems to be a lot of misconception about the Nigeria police and Nigeria in general. Here at the Kano State Police Command, we have good news of two officers who have not only worked diligently but have distinguished themselves in the anti corruption crusade. In Kano on Thursday, Corruption Tori was at the Kano State Command of the Nigeria Police, the Consumer Protection Council and Kano Road Traffic Agency, three organizations whose officers have displayed a commendable sense of anti-corruption. On behalf of Corruption Tory, in support of the MacArthur Foundation, we are presenting this award to you for your outstanding efforts in the war against corruption. Thank you very much. On behalf of Corruption Tory, in support of the MacArthur Foundation, presenting this award to you as a result of the outstanding efforts in the fight against corruption. So on behalf of Corruption Tory, in support of the MacArthur Foundation, we are presenting this award to you for your outstanding efforts and service in the fight against anti-corruption. The officers had rejected bribe to aid abets and conceal the distribution of expired goods which could have put the lives of many people in danger. Very well, because people have been calling me, you know, to congratulate me, to thank me, you know, for the action of this particular policeman. You understand now. So, in fact, people are so happy with the command, not only me, but with the Nigeria police force, with the new IG, you know, and uh, also because he also addressed us to be very honest and sincere to people. And this is what this man has uh, portrayed. In the course of our operation, the staff from the agency, that's Consumer Protection Council, and one inspector, Garbarabu, were offered one million naira bribe, and they turned it down. They reported to the office, and uh, we feel this kind of people, if they are encouraged, others will emulate. So that is why we give them the one million naira they were offered for the bribe for them to know they can get it legitimately. For the upright officers, it is a new dawn of recognition, respect and goodwill. A lot of my coursemen and my friends in outside call me and say 
congratulations to me and I'm happy. Even inside my agency, some people give me great regard. I'm very happy as I get this recognition from different organizations. And as I get this recognition, I know I upgrade my family and my organization and my office duty. By the time this thing happened, people are calling me from nowhere, from over the countries are congratulating me. Nobody will disgrace me about this thing. Anybody will tell me, you will call me, you will congratulate me, the thing I do. So some people, they want to learn what I did. The corruption story recognition, which is supported by the MacArthur Foundation, is among many others to the officers to encourage honesty at work. Ifunanya Ilodianya in Kano. The Executive Director, National Primary Healthcare Development Authority, Dr. Fasai Schreiber, says P Pfizer and BioNTech have promised to supply 1 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccine at the end of 2021 to low-income and medium-income countries of the world. He stated this in a press conference organized in Abuja on Tuesday. According to him, at the end of 2021, another 2 billion doses will be supplied. The director disclosed that the International Monetary Fund has advocated $50 billion COVID-19 fund to enable faster and wider COVID-19 vaccination of at least 40% of the world population at the end of 2021. Signature TV correspondent Chibezo B attended the press conference and now reports. Pfizer and Biotech pledged on Friday of last week to provide 1 billion doses of their COVID-19 vaccine to low and middle income countries by the end of 2021 and another 1 billion doses in 2022. Johnson & Johnson also announced it has signed a deal to provide 200 million doses of its vaccine to COVAX. Separately, the International Monetary Fund is now advocating for a $50 billion fund to be spent on ensuring a faster rollout of COVID-19 vaccines globally and is calling for at least 40% of the global population to be vaccinated by the end of this year and at least 60% by June 2022. The fund will be used to increase COVAX vaccine coverage, procure additional tests, and expand vaccine production capacity. The Boeing State Police Command has arrested two suspected armed robbers and recovered firearms and ammunition in his Sioux on a local government area of the state. Police spokesperson in the state, DSP Lovett Order, disclosed in a statement issued in a backlink on Monday that one of the suspects, Elu Emmanuel, was arrested alongside the gang leader, known as Blood. Emmanuel made a useful statement to the police and led police operatives to the house of the other gang members, who were alleged to have been terrorizing the area and the brains behind various attacks on three police divisional headquarters in Onicha, Aboemege, and Ohozara. The gang leader was apprehended with gunshot injuries while others escaped into the nearby bush with bullet wounds. Items recovered in Emmanuel's residence was one double-barrel English gun with 11 live cartridges, one locally made gun and a riot police smoke gun stolen from Ohozara Police Divisional Headquarters when the division was attacked on May 6. Three police batons two communication radio and a charger, one grenade, one canister of tear gas, two police belts were also recovered from the suspects. The national leader of the All Progressives Congress, APC Ahmed Tinubu, has led some party stalwarts in the southwest to condole with President Muhammad Buhari over last Friday's plane crash in Kaduna State. President Buhari received Tinubu and his entourage at his official residence in the State House, Abuja. On Monday, Tinubu was accompanied by a retired Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General Alani Akinrinade, 
former interim national chairman of APC and ex-governor of Oshun State, Chief B.C. Akande, former governor of Ogun State, Chief Olushegun Osoba, and Chief Pius Akinye Lure. Ondo State Governor Ritmi Akredolu says the special assistant, media and publicity to President Muhammad Buhar Garuba Shehu lacks the authority to weigh into decisions of the Southern Governors Forum to ban open grazing. Governor Akredolu, who spoke through his senior special assistant on special duties, Doyin Odobowale, warned the presidential aide and his cohorts to desist from hauling insults at the elected representatives of the people. He maintained that the president's aide was not empowered to make such policy statements for the federal government and has failed to provide the solution to the farmers and herders' crisis. Akare Dolu announced that one of the decisions of the Southern Governors Forum, which is ranching and revival of forest reserves, was part of the permanent solution to the frequent clashes between farmers and herders. And now moving over to business. French fashion tycoon Bernard Arnold on Monday edged ahead of Jeff Bezos to become the world's richest man as his net worth climbed to $186.3 billion, as against Jeff Bezos' $186 billion. The chief executive officer of Moet, Hennessy Lewis Vuitton, saw his luxury goods firm stock increase by 0.4% during the first hours of trading on Monday. The rise pushed Arnold's personal stake up by more than $600 million and placed Moet Hennessy Louis Vuitton's market cap at $320 billion, according to Forbes. It comes just days after Arnott pushed Elon Musk's worth of $147.3 billion out of his pot as the world's second richest man after Tesla's share price sank. Hello and welcome to Entertainment News. It's always a pleasure to have you join me on Entertainment Segment. I am Blessing Adejo. Singer Davido's official DJ Ikul and his beautiful partner Joyce will be welcoming their first child together soon. The soon-to-be parents in preparation for their baby through a beautiful baby shower which was attended by close family members and friends. The heavily pregnant lady was all smiles and lovely pictures posted on social media by the father of her child. Sharing the pictures and excited equal teasingly wrote, Baby Loading. The couple made the news of the pregnancy public some weeks ago on Mother's Day. Equal said they were expecting a baby girl and many congratulated them. Well, more goodwill messages has poured in for the two as their bundle of joy is set to arrive in a matter of weeks. Huge congratulations to them. We wish them safe delivery. According to reports, prostitutes in Derma Growth Point, Zimbabwe, are reportedly accepting buckets of maize and cups of beans as payment for their male clients. Some of the sex workers who spoke appealed to the government and other organizations for low-interest loans to start incoming generating projects to fend for their starving families. One of the sex workers who only identified herself as Alice said, gone are the days when we used to charge five US dollars for the whole night. These days we, we even collect one dollar so that we're able to buy vegetables and tomatoes and cook something for our starving children. Alice disclosed that she has three children, one of which is in Form 4. The child needs Zimbabwe school examination cancel registration fee, while the other kids are in grade 7 and grade 1 respectively. She added, I now even accept a bucket of maize or cups of dried beans as payment for sex service. At least, I am assured that my children will have porridge. Another sex worker also identified as Mavis said she have opted to be a house help. She however said locals don't pay. The sex workers who spoke to the publications were attending a key affected population workshop meant to find ways of reducing HIV and sexually transmitted infections. The seminar was converged by the National Aid Council at Dema Good Point. And this is where we draw the curtain for today. I remain your uncle, blessing at the job. Bye. Before we end the news, 
a recap of our major stories. Gunmen on Tuesday attacked Iwolo, a police station in Ezago local government area of Enugu State. Signature communications honor officers of Kanu State Police Command as anti-corruption icons. The National Primary Healthcare Development Authority says P Pfizer and BioNTech promises to supply 1 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccine at the end of 2021. Safety and security begins with you. Be patriotic. Report any suspicious activity to law enforcement agencies. Please stay safe. That's the Signature TV News update. On behalf of my producer, Nasir Usman, I am Marvelous Obomana. Thanks for watching.